Um, we are here today to, for our very first Google Hangout, um, and we're broadcasting live to a population of people for Health Unlock. So today we have the pleasure of having two of our community admins in in talking with us. Um, I'd just first like to say it's very experimental, um, so there's probably going to be huge amounts of technical errors. But uh, if you'll if you'll bear with us, we'll we'll try and resolve them. So here I have today, um, I'd like to introduce Nick York from the CLL support community and uh, Ruth Grosar from um, NRAS, National Rheumatoid Arthritis Society. Um, if you just introduce yourselves quickly and, and say what, what role you perform. Ruth. <laughs> uh, thanks for the introduction. Yes, I am the digital media coordinator at NRAS. Um, I look after the website here, um, social media and online fundraising, lots to do, and um, I kind of co-admin, administrate the uh, Health Unlocked community we have with my colleague Victoria on the helpline. Thanks, and, and Nick, can you tell us about yourself? Yeah, yeah sure. Good afternoon, Ruth and Matt. Um, I'm kind of General's dog's body, really. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. <laughs> I am a trustee of the CLL Support Association and obviously initiated our online community with yourselves here on this platform and look after the general needs of uh, our community and membership and um, as a trustee providing um, conventional support as well as um, online support um, basically and I administrate obviously uh, co-administrate now because we have a second uh, our, platform, uh, our community here on uh, Health Unlocked. Thanks, Nick. And I'm sorry to say that, that Paul um, from Lupus UK, who was going to be with us, unfortunately is ill today, so he's un unable to come, but I'm sure we'll, we'll include him in further hangouts. Um, so the purpose today, really, of, of bringing you here and is, is really sharing knowledge, um, and particularly around launching and establishing and starting and, and seeding com communities and populations of people in Health Unlocked. So one of, yeah. the, one of the key issues is really, it's, we always see it a bit like um, you know, growing a plant. So you have to sort of really think about those first stages. And, and what I'm really keen to do today is, is try to get Ruth and Nick to cast their minds back you know, and, and just think about what were those first steps that they took, what's the secrets that they learned so that we can share that with other people who are either starting or, you know, tr trying to get communities to um, to grow and, and thrive, and so that all of that value that, that that we know exists from having people share stories and experiences with others, that, that they can enjoy that. Um, so it's it's so I just want to start really in the first section about the. Activity. And in the second section, we want to talk about how that once you've launched, then you start to grow. And so the first question I would say is to Ruth, I, I would say sort of what, what are the three main things that you would recommend to people who are taking those very first steps, they've just signed up to Health and Not, and they want to get a group going. What, what, what are the most important things that you would advise? Um, I think one of the first things I would recommend is that people think about what other communities they've already got online. So whether you have um, a, a forum already on your website or a Facebook group um, already established and think about how this is going to fit with uh, that community and whether they'll be kind of, which one are you going to really get behind maybe. Uh, we definitely probably had a kind of early issues with um, our members forum uh, versus health and locked and it was because that's one of our member benefits um, we obviously promote that but then health and not came along was very flashy and free <laughs> and um, people would were quickly joining that and members were saying you know well, why should I join that and the members forum so we had that kind of which one do we work with the most or do we promote both and look after both communities which we have done over the, the few years that we've had the N, um, the NRAS community on Health and Not. Uh, the members forum 
is kind of has stayed the same uh, over the years so that seems to kind of have uh, reduced in in popularity but uh, the health and lock community has gone from strength to strength and I don't know whether that's just the um, technology or whether it's just the support base on there is bigger and um, yeah we've just kind of seen those kind of working in a different way um, so I think people should think about whether they've got the time to look after various communities online and we um, I think we've managed it um, okay our membership team look after the the members forum and with health and lot it seemed fitting that the helpline um, kind of started to monitor that as it as they've got the most knowledge on RA yeah. uh, rheumatoid arthritis for those who don't know and um, yeah so we've kind of we've spread it out across the organization I think that that's worked well um, for us uh, the other thing maybe is just the time it takes to to monitor and just kind of help the community grow I think it, it's kind of hard to think how much that would take up because you don't know how successful it's going to be but yeah. at, at present we're taking I think it's a, a full day a week um, obviously spread out uh, on the on the forums on the community so that's that's kind of quite substantial and that um, the helpline have kind of incorporated it into the service that we provide so um, yeah. yes it's, it's quite a uh, commitment I think and then you know just thinking about who you're going to have in-house to look after I think we've we've got quite a good mix so we've got the helpline kind of monitoring and dealing with any kind of issues that arise and then I'm like supporting that so it kind of works well because I'm promoting the site and um, Victoria is kind of doing the looking sure so people, we do it, and actually a lot of the staff chip in with monitoring, so that's quite helpful. Yeah. So just, I just want to sort of steer you into that actual sort of first steps, and maybe I'll ask Nick to pitch in here. So, yeah, in sure. terms of just imagining yourself with that sort of initial task of how are we going to get this going? What, um, in terms of you know things like who who are you reaching out to to get? you know, the first bits of content in the system, how then do you kind of keep a little bit that first momentum of, of, of content? What, what are the challenges maybe okay. of understanding the system that you would share with other people um, as much as actually sort of monitoring and things like that? I think one of the things that to understand is that um, um, myself and our organisation have come from another end of the cell, um, the involuntary organisation. a small population and how many of us are diagnosed um, so therefore we approach this from a situation of need and lack of resources and the need was massive that you know apart from being able to reach out for telephone support and our lack of resources to service that we needed a, a facility where we could actually be able to provide immediate response, uh, response and also allow the community to support each other. Um, I, I, I've got no visual content here so my machine's bleeped at me so if somebody signaled you can hear me. We can, yeah. we can hear you, there was a little are bit. Are you able to hear me? <laughs> yes we are, yeah. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so you might have to steer me back on course um, with regards to the questioning, but the, fr from from a challenge point of view, that we had very few resources, so it was a question of relating to your, yourself as an individual and realizing what support and what needs you had, and therefore trying to expand upon those, uh, you know, further extend your own reach as an organisation to be able to meet the demand of your population. So from our point of view, HU provided the platform, as uh, Ruth said, nice and free, nice and tidy. Um, that involved, though, a process by myself as an individual where obviously I was extremely naive, so I needed to step into the environment to find out about the environment, and, and therefore what I actually did, and I wrote a blog about it earlier for you guys, was to step into other forums to learn the etiquette and also to meet my community in other places where that enabled uh, me to strike up relationships with other advocates internationally and then to look at our UK needs and to strike up a small tight little community where I could work with that community 
to evolve, learn how to function, learn the rules, as well as going on a few courses as well to learn how to support people. And then you guys came along, and there's an opportune moment where you know we were able to, uh, I was able to contact that organise everybody through the extended network to bring them all together as pioneers on, on onto your side, and and that involved sourcing reliable people. I think the strength of us as an organisation online and as a community is that people accept and, and, and expect a level of content that we provide, that we qualify everything before we provide it, we've set the scene with regards to our own standards and we brought in, I brought in my teachers who taught me to operate online and gave me the rules to play out to also act as contributors internationally and then the little community that I developed on another platform as pioneers came on board and are now our volunteers. And that's really helped drive us as an organization. It meant actually we needed to do it. Yeah, we've done the homework. Um, we've investigated similar operations to see how they operate so that we have, know how to, 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 to live within the boundaries and, and can set rules. Um, we've understood pro way and, and, and gained an understanding of how best people understanding best practice you know I myself went on Macmillan support courses for that purpose you know um, I hope that kind of answers the question um, it was it fund fundamentally fundamentally you've got to do the groundwork you've got to remember what, you, what helps me as an individual is remembering my own diagnosis of a, an incurable disease that's a chronic disorder and when I reached out for help there was nothing there and the desperation I felt and and if you can relate to that with your audience that you're all in this together yeah um, so you, you you can actually whatever role you're playing in that community and from an administrator's point of view um, you understand what you're providing and, and you know the rules and you and primarily um, we've put together a team of individuals we you know we could call them um, you might call them power users we would call you could call nerds information nerds you know we've got those that provide a battery of constant up, uh, upgraded quality of information those that provide um, human stories and encourage sharing and encourage exploration yeah so yeah, I mean that's really useful. I think that focus on preparation, which is uh, I think what you you both did in different ways yeah. very well, is 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 something that we try to message to as many of the new uh, administrators as possible. Number one being, um, can you get a group of what you call pioneers? We we often suggest as evangelists going and prime them with that sort of task that there, there is a job to do to get to get things going and that their, that their work will sort of essentially shape the future of this community. Um, so giving some sort of leadership on how you want to shape different content and then sort of them the freedom to then sort of create that content. Um, and then the second sort of um, Part of that really is 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 how then to get the broader population of your you know your your constituency yeah. involved and aware and engaged in that sort of that first bit. So I, I'm I'm kind of probably going to just move on to the second part. So so if if the first part is really um, how do you how do you get from a seed to a sort of sapling? Um, then the second part is really how to get from a sapling into a sort of tree, which you mm -hmm. both have done in very, very good ways. And I think that you know the, the, the resource that we've seen in, in both of your communities is, is clearly providing an important service, not just to you know, a geographically local population, but increasingly so to a sort of global audience. And what I'd like to sort of focus on really is once you've got over that first 50, maybe first 100 users. Um, I know, sort of, Nick, you just touched on it just now, but how, you know, how do you sort of transform that into, uh, you know, a sustained and engaged and increasing sort of engagement from, from this population? So um, is it, I mean, you both have, if, for if instance, you, you both like, have... If you'd you like, I'll give you some input back on that. Um, yeah. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to interrupt. I probably cracked up there. I think one of the things, firstly, then recognizing when you're beginning to grow. At the very beginning, you've got to put the work in. There's no shortcuts. Yeah, you've got to stroke 
the, the community. You've got to keep it uh, enthused. And you've got to be consistent, yeah. Um, and you've got to have a set of rules to follow. And the easiest set of guidelines, you know, we're based in the UK, so we understand uh, how to keep within those boundaries. But fairly soon, you've got to realise that you can't do this on your own because bringing it on yourself, you're using all of those hours to keep it ticking along. You've got to actually reach out to your pioneers, they're the volunteers, and your teachers, in my case it was, you know, they're the contributors, um, to, to carry that forward to the next stage and encourage, encourage conversation and make people welcome. Um, and uh, at the same time, um, I suppose keep networking, 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 punching out all of the time, um, using the resources you have. I was, we didn't bring our membership in. Um, until the organization as a group of pioneers and um, volunteers or contributors are actually a fully functioning little outfit. And, and at that point then, as our charity did not have an online community, I was able to put that out into the newsletter um, and use the remind people three times basis. In fact, we reminded ours for the third time um, in our recent newsletter. Um, which has allowed a steady increase, and we keep pumping it out there as well. That you've got users in your community that are also users in other communities. So they'll be on Facebook or, or, or other equivalents, or they'll be on other, you know, on, on other, to actually put it out to those groups and let them know what's going in yours. And you can slowly bring the scattered crowd together. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and and it's keeping on the case constantly, constantly. And the great thing is. You actually begin to be able to step back. I mean, the massive thing that we did um, that I was able to do is I found my co-administrator. That happens to be in Australia, which gives us 24-hour coverage. And it's such a relief to be able to stand back knowing that when you get up in the morning, somebody's been watching the door, you know? So I'll pass it on. <laughs> Sorry, I'll talk forever. Ruth, can you just give us your insights on that? Um, I, think, I think Nick just touched on some interesting points there, which is, that sense, I think, that you described at the beginning of maybe how much you resource, uh, uh, you know, an engagement with Health Unlocked. Um, you know, I think CLLs have done that very effectively to recruit from with uh, the within the population and share the share the the responsibility of keeping the community going. Have you yeah. have you have you done those sort of things, or have you used other techniques to to you know share that that responsibility with with other people? I think um, all our admins are, are um, staff at NRAS, but we we did take um, the volunteers um, badge quite um, seriously. You know, in the early, in the previous um, version of the site, we had uh, people request to be a volunteer on there, and they were kind of our, you know kind of extra help to keep an eye on the site and um, offer as much support and information as they can. Um, I think you've got plans for that to return or we can assign our own badges again. We, I mean, we haven't actually got around to that yet. Um, but we are thinking about having, you know, a kind of experienced member uh, role which kind of um, allows new members to, to kind of have a, a bit more trust in or kind of... Uh, you know, they're kind of look to these people for um, valid information. And, and I think that those people were very helpful in um, monitoring the site, um, and they still are. We um, People are really good with um, kind of saying, you know, there's some, if there's anything going on that may be negative, they'll, they'll identify that for us. I mean, we unfortunately we haven't got someone in Australia to help. So we, we sometimes struggle to be there all the time, and I think we need to probably start to address that soon um, but for the most part the community does look after itself and they they care for each other it's just when things maybe go occasionally sour that we'll step in and and really you know have to kind of say hey guys this isn't on <laughs> or if there's just put it you know if there's any spam or anything we we'll just get in there and take it off straight away which happened today instantly and um, yeah I think we've never really We've not done so much of the steering conversation um, as perhaps Nick has in the past. We've, because 
I wasn't here when um, the NRAS community was set up, but I had a chat with Victoria about this, and um, we don't think there's ever been a point where it's really been very quiet, or we have had to kind of step in and say, you know, what, what, talk about this, talk about that. We just haven't had a, it. We haven't been able to keep up with it the whole time. It's just been growing and growing. And yes, we have this global audience. Mm -hmm. Basically, there's a lot of them. You know, people in the U.S. who've joined, and uh, um, I think there's over 160 countries using our community. So. Um, yeah, we've just kind of been chasing it the whole time, and uh, I think we've always had a presence there. We've always had the NRAS blog, which is now just another category, which is called Updates from NRAS. And we're just kind of, you know, waving in the background that we're here and we talk about things that's go that are going on in the charity and kind of uh, rheumatoid arthritis research and updates. So. kind of looks after itself um, and we just yeah do what we can to kind of to encourage it's all positive and um, I think it's it's we're always learning that's the trouble you know like we I think we were we were unsure when we we started the community but it's we you know it's been a great way of another way of promoting the charity and kind of providing this extra service which I think is as important as the the telephone service that we provide so it's um we've you know we've taken on as uh, you know another element of what the charity kind of does to to help um newly diagnosed and people who've got established disease so i think uh, um it's great <laughs> great um Sorry, I, I sort of that was our first technical failure in the I sort oh, of disappeared no. from. But, but, so I didn't, I didn't ca catch you all of gems of wisdom there. But um, I think I sort of probably got the gist of it. Um, Nick, are there are, are there any? I know that you you're very plugged into the kind of academic side of and and, and yeah. research side side of things. I wonder whether you could just talk a little bit about about how you how you use health. Could you repeat that? that? I, I, um, I know well, that. I'll I'll try that just one more time. Well, so I, I, th I think I we can look at it. We can look at it from maybe there's a different. different... You, you, you go ahead. Yeah. You go ahead. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. I'm assuming you can. Yeah. Yes. Very well. Very okay. well. I think I think one of the easiest things is is, is to understand is perhaps. For, from our end, there's a different scale of issue, and actually, Health Unlock is quite a critical um, facility for our people. You know, um, although we have a few scattered around the world, we're, we're quite a small. You know, only only about three thousand people a year in the UK are diagnosed with us syndrome, and you know, with an average lifespan of ten years, that means there's only thirty thousand of us at any one time. So, and demographically, we're diagnosed at an older age. Um, 72 is the average age of diagnosis, so you can understand, you know, maybe not many of us are that computer savvy, although that's improving. And we're, it's an exciting time for chronic lymphocytic leukemia at the moment. That the, there are a lot of potential new treatments coming to the fore, and there's a lot going on, and it's an exciting place at the moment for research. You know, the research community is provided with a continual amount of experimental tumor to experiment on because it comes out of our blood. You know, it's constant. Um, and therefore there's a lot of exciting news, so maybe that's helping us fuel this. So what I would call our CLL nerds, um, me myself being one of them, are constantly pumping that information in, gives us lots of topical content to talk about, and then we can also mix in with that, which is most important, is the human story. Like Ruth said, we have to help people who are newly diagnosed when they come on board to understand how to deal with the, comp the challenges of actually diagnosis and the particulars of, uh, of living with the disease, and explore together yeah, how we live with the disease, how we deal with the different stages of treatment and trauma. Um, so when I said to you earlier, we're all in it together, maybe we approach it from a slightly different angle, is that we've um, there's a lot of respect because everybody's going through, everybody's swallowing the same pill, and it's a mixed pill, but it's not necessarily the greatest pill. Um, and that helps us. So it, it, from our point of view, it's a very important resource because it doesn't overstretch the charity and it allows us 
to engage with our community. Important interface as well to learn from our community how we can react as a charity. Yeah. Um, and that makes a massive difference. You know, it's hard, it's all part of our process of growth and driving. At the moment, for example, we're involving ourselves in developing our online platform. We're now moving to the next stage of technology to provide something that will, <laughs> will, will upgrade, look after um, mobile, uh, mobiles and, and, and tablets, etc. because that's the way we're going. But yeah. HU is going to be part of that. HU is always going to be part of this. You know, we were fortunate enough to find you guys and start our online community. I recommend it to anybody. I know how dedicated you are. We've all, you know, we've, we'll all go through challenges together as we move forward. And uh, we've been remarkably lucky. I've only, in all of my time, in one year, had to ban one person from the whole community, and that was last week, and that was a spammer, because they, they're getting through. The, the spammers we know at the moment are beginning to understand how they can get in, yeah? And they're going in through private messages at the weekend. You've got mechanisms at the moment. Every time we've ever had to shut anybody out of our group, I'm, I'm not even sure if we've ever had to shut anyone up or delete any conversation. There seems to uh, the, the, the group has grown organic. We grow organically. We learn from each other organically. We've got a lot of time on our hands waiting for the bus to hit us as individuals, or not hit us, maybe the way. So we're fortunate. Maybe Great. we don't follow the same pattern as everybody else. I'm, I'm but all I can say is that, that we've I'm grown gonna, I'm rapidly. I'm going to move on to um, yeah. the, last, the last bit, Sorry, which I'll I just wanted to bring, bring you back to the actual sort of technology again, if, if, if that's OK. And I, I'm kind of thinking, sure. in terms of sort of wrapping up, in terms of the concrete things of that sort of growing thing. So, so one of the things that we we, we say about health or not is it, it's really about reach. You know, it's about how many people yeah. that you can bring into a very sort of high quality situation where people can talk to other people, and the the tools that we have to do that, and that you have to do that, and focus on those. So. One is, I know that you both as organizations have put the, you know, you've got a widget that goes into your website that um, has, has attracted people, certainly in the growing phases of, 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 of the community, um, that you've, you've been quite rigorous about emailing, you know, your list of people, it's, again, at the early stages of the community that you use both face, Facebook newsletters and Twitter campaigns, um, you know, all in different degrees, and how you know, in terms of that reach that you, you feel that you've done and what you would talk about, you know, as, as the most important parts of that um, to the audience here who, who, who kind of want to learn from you about growing. Pass it to Ruth. Ruth, <laughs> can you... Um... Okay, yeah, can you hear me? You've gone yeah. and you seem to disappear, but I, um, I think I got the question on, but... Um, I think we, I mean, we've probably come to the decision to just share all communities with each other. So we um, promote our community via our members' um, e-news. And like I said, that works alongside the members' forum, our Facebook um, following and Twitter following. We just kind of, we're always saying on, you know, you can talk on here, but if you want to go over to Health Unlocked and, um, and meet other people, with the disease then please go ahead you know it's free to join and we're always kind of um, having that kind of gradual push and I think we've seen it grow probably because of that but we haven't been too forceful with it but I think it's um, it kind of it's helped perhaps maybe get to the size it is now but as I said previously yeah. it seems to have just kind of taken it's had a life of its own in the sense that we, you know, I don't know how much it was pushed before I started working here, but I think it was promoted as as much and it's just, but the last couple of years seem to have just really um, expanded and we're, I think we're over three and a half thousand people on there. And that does obviously mean that they're, they're using right. it. Thanks. I don't think they're using it every day, but we did, um, we did a piece of research for um, the big rheumatology conference, um, BSR, and um, that came out saying people were using health and not um, at least you know once a week, if not more, um, every day. So we know that they're on there um, a lot of the time, and we need to be there too to kind of 
um, you know, check in and make sure everything's going well. But um, yeah. yeah, I don't know if I've answered your I'm, question. There. <laughs> no, that's great. I'm going to have to meet because we only got a, a couple I've of minutes. Left, so I've got Nick, 30 seconds. Sort of wrap up. 30 seconds. I, I think the easiest thing from my <laughs> point of view is to remember. If there are two or three as, things. As, as, yeah. Can I just say something? As an administrator, you are at the helm. You're holding that helm. You're, you, you can feel the wind blow. You can feel how choppy the waves are. And you know when certain things need to, need to be stirred up and, and stroked along. And your, your support in terms of your co-administrators and everything else, they can help generate content. It's content that will help drive growth. I see you for the first time, Matt, by the way. Um, <laughs> content will drive. So when people visit, you want them to stay. You want them to go. You don't want them to bounce. You want them to go inside. That in, into the, encourage encourage people to keep the content up, and always yeah. keep reaching out. Keep reaching out. Don't forget six months. Don't. If you, I, I, I'm guilty now. I just suddenly realized. Hang on a minute. I've got my extended network of all of those uh, platforms that people know me on. I need now to activate our our volunteers to just remind them. Oh, by the way, now. We've grown by 50%, and it's such a buzzing place. You better go and check it out, you know? Um, mm. And you've just got to keep that kind of thing up. Brilliant. Okay. That's my only it's been, tip. Yeah? Well, I think we, we, we could probably talk quite a lot longer than this, but I want to keep it sort of Obviously. to half an hour so that people, yeah. you know, can stay engaged. It's been, I think, great content here to carry on that segue. <laughs> um, and I just really want to thank both of you for spending this time. Um, I, I really hope it's been useful to the viewers um, and it will be you know, online for people to access for the future as something of a guide for first-time administrators. So thanks again and we're, we're going to hopefully run more of these webinars um, to share the knowledge that we know is out there and needs sharing. Um, so we look forward to seeing you in future. Um, many thanks. Many thanks. Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Goodbye, Bob. Keep pushing. Give up. Thanks a lot. Bye. Cheers. Bye-bye.